Chances are that if you clicked on this video, you've watched the Korean thriller The Call on Netflix, and that ending left you a little wanting, or at least confused. So here are my thoughts on the ending to hopefully give you a little bit of clarity. Now, obviously, this is going to contain spoilers. I have linked my spoiler-free review up in the corner someplace and is down in the description. Let's focus on that ending. First, I don't see this time craziness as a time loop like we sometimes see with time travel. I see this as two points in time on the same timeline that are progressing together at the same rate. Young Suk is the antagonist in the past, and Seo Yeon is the protagonist in the present. Now, to keep me from slaughtering their names and also for ease of just speaking, I'm going to abbreviate their names with YS and SY. I like that for symmetry. YS is in the past, SY is in the present. We know they're connected by a phone. That phone call between the past to the present is what how they communicate. Now, I believe what through what we're shown, the calls only go one way, that they go from the past to the present. So when YS saves SY's dad from the explosion, she's seen now as a good and helpful person. So when SY hears the screams and the cries of YS being beaten and tortured by her mom, she wants to help out. And she believes she is doing the right thing by helping her. But we quickly find out that YS is a psychopath and a murderer and not a good or helpful person at all. And YS blackmails SY for information because she holds all of this power. I mean, what is done in the past affects the present and it can't be changed. I mean, it's irrevocable at that point. So if something happens in the past and the past is continuing on, well, once it's the past, it's, it's gone. It's just done. But the past definitely influences the future. And that's where I believe, like I said at the beginning, I see this as two points in time moving, not this time loop, because then you would just, well, it's always just changing and it could change forever and then we don't get any type of resolution. SY informs YS where and how the police find the knife that YS used to kill her mom. Once she has that evidence, the police never find it. And therefore, YS never goes to prison, never gets committed, and she never gets caught which allows her later in the film to be in the present with SY. But we're gonna go back a bit, and this is where it does get convoluted and a little bit confusing. Young SY is being held captive in the past when her and her dad go to buy the house. And before the mom and the police get to the home, YS in the past calls her older self in the future, or the present, which allows the older YS to inform herself that the police are on their way. And if she doesn't act quickly, she is going to be arrested. She also is told that you need to keep the phone on in, thing, in case things don't work out so that we know how to change things. Because see, the present has the information of things that happened in the past which can influence the behaviors and the actions of the past, but the past can carry out all of these actions which then have huge ramifications for the present. So this warning allows YS in the past to be prepared and ready for battle. And we see the cop doesn't fare too well and the mom, they have it out back and forth. And finally, mom throws herself and YS off the balcony. And I'm guessing that's something that YS wasn't expecting. We then see SY in the present at the grave of her dad. And she turns and sees her mom and they walk down the walkway leading out of the cemetery. Which that leads us to believe though that they both survived that fall and just the, the whole mayhem in the past and they escaped. But then mom flickers and disappears. Well, why? So we see YS in the past begin to get up from her fall from the balcony. She's obviously survived. And I think it stands to reason that at some point in that past, she tracks down and kills mom because then mom in the present flickers and disappears. After that, she's also able to capture SY because that is how SY then wakes up in her brand new reality of being strapped in the basement screaming. So what do you think? Does that make sense to you? Hopefully it helps a lot more than it hurt. I would love to know your thoughts and theories. I want us to continue this conversation down in the comments below. I believe that's how we learn, that's how we get better, and that's how we are able to dissect things and hopefully put all of those weird pieces together of this movie so that we get one complete puzzle. And so then it's no longer a puzzle, it's a complete picture. So please start typing, put your thoughts and your theories in the comments below. If you enjoyed this, please give it a like. Also, don't forget to share and subscribe. I'm Chris, this is Movies and Munchies. Thanks for catching with me.